Okay, quickly to uh, some early trends and leads that are coming to us from Battleground Karnataka. Let's start with the Chief Minister of the State, Basavaraj Bumai, who's not been looking too happy this morning. He is leading from Shigao, as was expected. After all, he is the ch sitting Chief Minister of Karnataka. Uh, you have uh, Mr. Sidharamaya, the ex Chief Minister, leading from Varuna. Again, something that was expected. Uh, you have Ashok Rai, the Congress candidate uh, from Putturu, who is leading. And. Uh, we have, uh, you do remember that uh, the IT department has had raided his brother's house a week ago. So he currently is leading by a thousand votes from his constituency. This is Ashok Rai that we are talking about. Uh, we have the BJP's V. Somana who's trailing in Chamraj Nagar. Those are, as I said, early leads that are coming in. Uh, could perhaps indicate which way, uh, which way, uh, you know, uh, which way counting will go for the candidates, but as far as Mr. Bomai is concerned and Mr. Sidharamaya is concerned from Shigao and from Varuna, uh, it's it's largely a no contest, isn't it? Neha, Neha Ebale is joining us on the broadcast, so is Toyash Sakshi. Uh, Neha, over to you. As far as uh, Mr. Bomai is concerned from Shigao and as far as uh, Mr. Sidharamaya is concerned from Varuna, uh, this is a no-brainer, right? Well, you know, Shreya, as much as we love the Nataka and Karnataka, uh, you know, the fact that you're saying it's a no-brainer, of course, you know, huh. right now it wouldn't be wrong to say that it might just be a no-brainer. But having said that, we're standing outside Sidramaya's residence in Mysuru right now. And, you know, the calm that's just prevailing over here does raise questions about whether this is the calm before the storm. You know, there's, of course, a very, very relaxed atmosphere here. His son, Yatindra, was here. He met him some time back. He left. There are no karyakartas, no party workers here right now. And it seems like the Congress right now, you know, of course, is hmm. in a very relaxed mood. Will that really be setting the tone for this election? We saw from DK Shivkumar yesterday, he spent the entire day, you know, of course, resting it out towards the evening is when he stepped out to do a temple run. But um, having said that, uh, one thing that's certain is, Ashreya, it's only the uncertainty in Karnataka that's always been certain. So even this time around, as far as, you know, the candidates are concerned, uh, there is, of course, you know, going to be a lot of vote-based, uh, sorry, candidate-based voting this time is what we picked up from voters. Having said that, does Sidramaya really, of course, stand a chance in Varuna? Well, the early trends, of course, you know, that had come in uh, from the postal ballots, uh, we heard from, you know, uh, people over here as well at his residence, did suggest that he's taking a lead. Uh, possibly why, you know, of course, he's been so laid back. We've seen from him, he's been one of the few politicians in Karnataka who's been known to, you know, lose his temper and lose his temper quite quickly at the media. So with that being said, of course, today, How's this mood going to be? How's the mood across the district? Old Mysuru region, of course, you know, is going to be the key over here for BJP as well as the Congress. It's been that one, uh, you know, belt of um, Karnataka that's always, you know, been a JDS stronghold. And that's precisely really, you know, going to be, of course, uh, setting the tone this time ahead as well. Kumar Swami over there, we heard from him. He seemed to be, you know, of course, uh, quite modest in saying that they're a very small party, but... Uh, Shreya, we've seen from experience in the past as well, it has been the smallest party here, JDS, with just about 30 seats. That's really, you know, of course, gone on to decide who forms the government. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Okay, Neha, do stay on with us. Let me introduce our guest this, e uh, this morning as well. I'm so used to saying evening. I was about to say evening. <laughs> Good morning, Shreya. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Narayan. I hope you've got your cup of coffee. You yeah, have. Yeah, there it is. You, uh, you're carrying... Plenty of... Not the, quite the Bangalore filter coffee that I'm used to. We'll have to go to Bangalore. Whatever we have... Well, I think you can ask your correspondents have. to have one on me. Acha, yeah. Okay, Okay, and I... you're carrying your newspapers as well. And this is the Times of yeah. India this morning. Hi, can I just welcome Akshita Badu as well? Good morning, Akshita. Exit polls give, this is the Times of India, of course, Mr. Madhavan this morning, yeah. our favorite newspaper. Exit polls give the Congress the edge in Karnataka, but uh, differ on a clear win. Is that what, you know, that, that's the Times of India. Can our viewers see that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. What so, I found is that there is this late swing in, uh, uh, you know, there was a late swing in campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a strong Congress sort of a mood, and then suddenly you had the BJP... Uh, coming in with Mr. Modi's uh, hectic campaigning in the last round. I also find strangely a similar parallel that exit polls showed Congress well ahead, most of the credible ones did at least, but suddenly you find that you have the uh, BJP suddenly talking about something that looked like horse trading even as late as yesterday. Uh -huh. Operation Lotus is a fascinating word, but uh, essentially it comes down to we are ready to roll up our sleeves and do the old Karnataka stuff of... Uh, Last resort. <laughs> <laughs> resort politics.
the you last know, resort, as yeah. it were. Yeah. Too early to talk about that. Just take a look at the numbers that are coming yeah. in. Again, as I said, this, this, these are very early leads. Uh -huh. uh, what What is this? Uh, the BJP at 92, the Congress at 109. So the Congress is leading yeah. as we speak. These numbers will change very rapidly exactly. as we go ahead. And also um, the postal ballots, as you rightly said, not necessarily representative either in size or in mood. Because traditionally, in any case, the postal ballots uh, go with the ruling dispensation. Yeah, sort of. You could say uh, they are uh, slightly the better of people mm -hmm. and uh, they do not reflect usually a populist trend. Mm -hmm. This is my rough guess. You can't... Oh, in, India is changing so fast that anything should be taken with a health warning. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Akshita Baduria, you know, uh, as we speak, uh, you're seeing some gentleman looking very busy on screen. Uh, that those are those are pictures from the counting center, and what we have in, on on our screens is Mr. Basavaraj Bomai. Uh, he's gone to three temples this morning, Akshita, I believe, and he started with going to a Hanuman temple, which I believe is tradition. It's it's not something that has happened because of the entire Bajrang Bali controversy. I believe uh, that before every election, he does go to a Hanuman temple. I thought you started with Ganesha, but there must be some power for Hanuman. Yeah. I, uh, I love. I love. Interesting. I, I, I love Hanumanji. But anyhow, Akshita, uh, any any thoughts on the numbers we are seeing on our screens right now? Uh, good morning. So, as uh, you know, your team member very rightly said, uh, the only certain thing in Karnataka elections is the uncertainty, and that's what again we are seeing unfolding, right? Uh, so, these are early trends, uh, definitely, but it's definitely going to go down to the wire. Uh, we've seen traditionally that uh, BJP has been enjoying a greater uh, vote share, uh, uh, but you know, far lesser than Congress, or maybe you know, the difference is always of say five to six percent, but they have managed to convert that, uh, you know, vote shares into seat, which the Congress unfortunately has not been able to do. So 2013 being an exception where, you know, BJP uh, had a split. Otherwise, if you see 2008 or even 2018, uh, despite enjoying a greater vote share, Congress could not really convert that into seats. Whether or not the trend is going to continue in 2023 elections also is something that, you know, we'll have to just wait and watch. These are extremely early trends. Uh, we are going to get a clear picture only, say, by uh, 10, 10, 30. But I think everybody predicted that Congress is going to be in the lead. Uh, they might just emerge as the single largest party. Whether or not uh, they'll be able to form a government is something that we'll have to uh, wait and watch. And there are a lot of complexities around it. So even if Congress manages to emerge as a single largest party, uh, we'll just have to wait and watch, you know, which way actually JDS goes because uh, Mr. Kumar Swami has made it extremely clear that this time he's not going to be the kingmaker, but the king himself. So uh, we'll just have to wait till, say, probably you know, this afternoon to see which way uh, the trends go. Okay. Uh, you've spoken about the Congress, and let's put that piece of news out for our viewers as well. Uh, this is These are details that are breaking as far as the Congress's strategy is concerned uh, to keep their flock together. So let's just put that out on our screens for us. Uh, Congress sources seem to be suggesting that the Congress party is stationing seniors at various locations. Uh, we are also being told by way of sources that uh, all, all MLAs who manage to win will be moved, and this will happen as results emerge, which means once it is clear that a particular MLA is winning, they'll all be flocked together, as it were. And we are being told that all of them will be moving to Bangalore. I'd heard that uh, there's a there's a hotel slash resort in Hyderabad that is ready as well. I wonder if I can go back to uh, Neha on that question. Neha, uh, are you with us on this broadcast? If you are, are you picking up anything else as far as the Congress's strategy to keep its uh, flock together, etc. concerned? 